Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. It is I, Prometheus, the Punching the Walls of Reality. I know what you're saying, Punching the Walls of Reality, I don't quite know what that is, but it's alright. In due time, you will learn. You will learn well. I normally don't do videos. This is my first video, so be gentle. And I normally write these recaps. I decided to try something a little bit different for Season 4. Without further ado, this is my recap for The Walking Dead Season 4 series premiere, 30 Days Without an Accident. So, a little bit has changed since the last season. You know, Rick, Rick ended, well, he was still, he was still on his rictatorship towards the end, and you see a softer, you see the softer side of Rick this season, you know, he finds a buried gun, he doesn't want it, he wants nothing to do with guns. You know, uh, Herschel has to convince him <coughs> to actually take his weapon with him when he goes out to, you know, check for traps. So we see that Rick has stepped down, you know, his son, his son was actually urging him to, to you know, stay away from the leadership role. He's, you know, he's kind of crazy last season seeing his dead wife and all that. So, you know, a little bit of R&R &R will, will do him well. You know, he's more, he's more of a, more of a farmer now. And it's, I think it's, I think it's good for Rick. I think it, these are, these are positive changes in his life. So now Daryl stepped up. He's pretty much the leader. He's, it's ironic because obviously people already see Daryl, well, viewers of the show see Daryl as, you know, he's their hero. He's like this rock star. So even now the characters in the show start to view him that way. So with best boyfriend, uh, his name's Zach, you know, he's like, hey man, can I shake your hand? And Daryl's like, yeah, sure. Let me lick my fingers first. You know, all lubricated for you. So, you know, Daryl's... I mean, Daryl's already a badass, but now he's a leader as well. Yeah, so everyone's shacking up, you know. Tyrese has gotten with Karen, you know. One of the few to escape the, the Woodbury Massacre. Uh, Beth has a boyfriend by the name of Zach, you know. I'm sure that they will live happily ever after for a long time. Um, Carol, Carol and Daryl, you know, they still have their friendship. People are still on the fence, like, will it happen? Will it not happen? I'm calling it right now, it's not going to happen. There's going to be BFFs from this point on. So, you have it now. You have my prediction. Not my prediction, not my declaration that that's what's going to happen. You know, uh... And, uh, oh yeah, also, Sasha, Tyrese's sister, she stepped up. And Tyrese is... You know, he, he's a big teddy bear. He's talking about, you know, he doesn't like to kill the walkers that are on the fence. You know, he'd rather go and do some runs. You know, that's a lot safer, obviously. So, and Carl. Carl's also very changed from last season. We saw Carl literally as a stone-cold killer, you know, shooting dudes, you know, without even taking names. <coughs> and so we, we see uh, the, the same way that Rick has pulled back. Rick has pulled back and obviously wanted to set a better example for his son. You know, you can't just go around shooting people, you know. It's bad. Not even a zombie apocalypse. So Carl actually has friends his own age, which is it's just different. And the first time we've really seen children in the series. Um, I mean they were around in Woodbury a little bit, but they didn't really play a prominent role since I would say Sophia. So he so Carl has a friend now, and his his friend pretty much looks like Harry Potter, some people have said, you know, or Millhouse from The Simpsons. You know, pick your poison. So they're buddies. And so basically, I, I would say there's there's three major plot threads that run through this episode. I'll start off with Rick's <coughs> little st side adventure excursion beyond the fence. So Rick goes out there. He's supposed to check traps, make sure the walkers don't you know take all their game. So along the way, he finds a dead deer that's about to be eaten by what looks like a walker, and it turns out it's actually a woman who's this very very dirty and very disturbed. So anyway, so he starts talking to her, and we're just going to call her Zombie Lady, because I don't know what her name is, and I don't know, I, the second they introduce this character, I'm just waiting for her to just attack Rick and just rip his throat out, because 
I wasn't thinking just like George Romero, like they're just talking zombies now, because I was that was not convinced until the end that she was actually a breathing human being. So very very disturbing indiv individual. So basically, Rick's, Rick's talking with her. You only want her, you know, don't try anything because I'm Rick Grimes and I blow your brains out. So she's like, oh no, you know, I just need a friend. You know, my husband helped take care of me and all this and that. And Rick's like, all right, well, when I get there, I'm going to ask you and your husband three questions, you know, answer me these questions three. So they're walking through there, and they finally get back to her camp. She's living out of a tent. <coughs> and, you know, her husband, kind of a walker, kind of a severed head. You don't actually get to see his head, but, you know, it, it's there. You, you just, have to, just have to trust us. So she lunges at Rick with a knife. Rick's just like, get off me, you know, I've dealt with, dealt with worse, and so she's just like, oh, you know, I just wanted to feed you to my husband, can you not be so difficult about this, and she's like, you know, I never mind, I'm just gonna commit seven two. so she stabs herself in the stomach, she's like, oh, that really fucking hurt, why did I do that, so, and then, you know, Rick pulls his gun out and all that, and she's like, well, I'm gonna die anyway, not that it matters, but what are these three questions, he's like, hey, how many walkers have you killed? How many people have you killed? And I forget the, what the third one is. And they're like, what are you left in your pizza or something? I don't know. I'm sure it was important. So anyway, so, as a, you know, the whole point of this whole thing, you know, shows that Rick has opened up. You know, he's not the closed off person, pretty much psychopath that he kind of was in season three. You know, he's, he's softened his heart and he's trying to let people in, but he's still cautious. You know, still has to be on the lookout for crazy women because obviously they seem to be drawn to him. I mean, he seems to be drawn to them. So, that's pretty much the Rick story. So, I'm going to move on to, I believe it was Michonne, Daryl, uh, Tyrese, uh, Zach, and, oh yeah, the new guy from The Wire, whose name is Bob. So, they decide they're going to go on the run. Oh, and Sasha. So, Bob comes up and he's like, hey, I want to earn my keep, man, uh, you know. And Glenn vouches for him, or whoever it was. was like, oh yeah, you know, he was a medic in the army, so obviously that qualifies him to, to scavenge. <clears throat> so they go to they go to a, an abandoned store. <clears throat> you know, previously they had used a radio to draw the walkers out of that area. So they're thinking, all right, you know, so all we got to do with the walkers that are inside of the store, so they think. So they go, you know, they do their whole knock on the window, wait for the walkers to come up there. You know, pretty much is a it's a shooting gallery from there. Take them all out so they can just shop to their heart's content without the disturbance of walkers and. And trust me, when you're trying to shop, especially, you know, on a budget like they are, you really don't want to be disturbed by flesh-eating cannibals, so. Anyway, so they're shopping, and Bob gets the idea, like, oh, you know, we, obviously, it's implied that he has a drinking problem. He takes up a, picks up a bottle of alcohol, he's looking at it, looking at the shelf, looking at it, looking around, making sure no one's paying attention. He's like, you know what, second thought, I shouldn't have this, this isn't even my brand anyway, so. Puts it back on the shelf, shelf collapses and falls on top of him, so. Let that be a lesson to all you people who don't want to drink alcohol. If you pay, take it off the shelf, you might as well just drink the whole thing, because it could be worse. I mean, you know, what's worse, a hangover or having a zombie bite your throat out? So, lucky for Bob, he survives, and his throat <coughs> remains not only parched, but intact. So, um, yeah, so anyway, so the shelf falls, and this leads to a bunch of walkers that were having a, a hangout on the roof of the building, unbeknownst to everyone inside. Really, there's a crashed helicopter and just mayhem on top. So obviously the building has suffered some water damage and they start falling through the floor like, I don't know, like walker paratroopers or something. So they're falling through and everyone's like, oh my god, I thought this was for Claire Walkers. There's walkers everywhere, so I guess we gotta start killing these guys. So they're fighting their way out, Bob's under the shelf like, hey, you guys forget about me, you know, I know I'm new to the show, don't we die yet. So they help him out and as they're leaving, Zach gets gets ankle bitten, and then, you know, obviously the, the one-two punch combo zombies love is the ankle bite and the throat bite, and it's pretty much all said and done for him, so they're like, well, Harley knew you, Zach. I guess Beth is available now, so they all run out of there, and when they get back, Tyrese is like, you know what, I don't like runs either. I don't want to kill the zombies on the fence. I don't like runs. I'm just going to take up knitting or something. I don't know. I don't know what to do with myself in this reality. So, Daryl goes to break the news to Beth. It's like, yeah, so, you notice we're all back, and Zach hasn't come, <coughs> hasn't come to see you just yet. 
and she's like, yeah, he's dead, whatever, glad I didn't say goodbye anyway, and so she takes her little sign off her wall, you know, days without incident, or days without accident, and now it's back up to, now it's down to zero, so, anyway, I think she was happier just burying her head in Daryl's chest and just feeling safe, the type of safety that Zach just couldn't provide, that's, that's at least my assumption, I don't know for sure, I don't know about the subtext, but that's what I assume, so. She's not all that broken up about it, so neither should you, audience. So, and there's the other aspect of this episode. So Carl is hanging out with his buddy, you know, Millhouse, we'll just call him. <coughs> and Millhouse is like, hey, I'm going to go to story time. That's led by Carol. He's reading the kids' stories, and then just as the story's getting good, he's like, you know what? I got a story for you. It's called Knives, and it's called Learning How to Fight with Knives. And Milton's like, oh! I don't feel so good, Miss Carol. I need to go. And she's like, all right, I guess, get out of here. I don't want you throwing up all over your classmates. So he leaves. <coughs> He's looking a little worse for wear, so he goes, decides to take a shower, coughing in their good water supply. Then he collapses, bumps his head or whatever. So it's unclear what kills him. I assumed it was the fall, like maybe he passed out or faded, and he just busted his skull open. Maybe he had some you know, life-threatening illness that just now manifested, so it's unclear, but either way, he turns very quickly. I mean, it was almost like, it was similar to Shane, I would say, because Shane turned, like, right after he died, and so he, so, you know, it ends with, with, um, this walker running around, so we don't really know, I mean, the implications are clear, <clears throat> you know, they think they're all safe, but there's a walker amongst them, so we'll see, we'll see what, how the death toll, what that looks like in the next episode, so. That's pretty much it. That is uh, the recap for The Walking Dead Season 4 series premiere, or season premiere, 30 Days Without an Accident. If I missed anything, too bad. Watch the episode and maybe you'll, you'll catch all of those. So if you liked it, or even if you didn't like this, maybe you're like, you know, you suck. This is terrible. Well, this is my first one. I'm going to be doing this the whole season, so I expect not only uh, my recaps, but also the video quality and the overall quality of the production to increase as the season goes on. So be sure to subscribe, like the video, leave a comment, and, you know, positive or negative, any criticism is more than welcome, any positive feedback is also welcome, even if you just palm strike your hand into the keyboard, you know, that, that counts too, you know, we can't all be literate. So, anyway. It's me, Prometheus, signing off, punchingthewallsofreality.com, try not to get eaten by a zombie. If you do, then I guess chop your foot off or something.